welcome to Wave TV. I'm your host, Roxy Inez. We have such an exciting show for you today. We have Tabitha DeLine with Campus Beat, covering what's happening here at CCSJ. Matt Mabry with Wave Sports. Reporter Murillo Lopez covering news from Northwest Indiana. And a special Wave TV interview about the upcoming Humanities Festival. Coming up at the news desk, First Lady Jill Biden visits Northwest Indiana Community College. Area schools face plunging enrollments. Road construction snarls traffic but brings benefits to commuters. Lake County launches new waste collection requirements. And learn how you can join the Easy Pass Community Rewards Program. Many new and positive changes have been happening here across campus. With Campus Beat, here's Tabitha DeLion. Hey guys, it's Tabitha and welcome back to Campus Beat. I want to give a big shout out to all of the students that are participating in any events going around the campus. Freshman and sophomore registration starts Thursday, March 23rd, while juniors and seniors registration is open Friday, March 24th for the fall semester. The Chocolate Easter Bunny Drive continues through March 24th, so make sure to drop off your donations to the Campus Ministry Office on the first floor. Humanities Week starts next week, March 27th through the 30th. Make sure to stop by Wednesday the 29th at 3.30 in the Black Box for the Against the Grain release party. We have limited copies and readings from students who participated. That's all I have today. Back to you, Roxanne and Aaron. Thank you so much for those updates, Tabitha. First Lady Jill Biden visited Valsparaiso's campus of Ivy Tech Community College earlier this month. Biden's visit is a part of the administration's commitment to create jobs throughout career-connected learning. Ivy Tech showcased its renewable energy program to its First Lady. Coming up after this break, area schools are facing plunging enrollment. We'll take a look on how they plan to respond. Thank you so much for staying with us. Public schools across Northwest Indiana are reporting a drop in enrollment. Enrollment across 16 public school districts in Lake County fell by roughly 7% since 2018. According to an analysis from the Indiana Department of Education, during the same five year period, Porter County School District saw only a 4% decline. Newton and Jasper counties to the south saw a 13% and 5% declines respectively. But there are some exceptions. Districts that saw an increase in student population include Crown Point Community School Corporation, Valparaiso's Community Schools, and Porter Township School Corporations. In 2019, the district hired an expert to examine population trends in the district. Dr. Jerome McKibben has analyzed changes in school district population across the U.S. His report predicted a slow decrease over 10 years. He points to the lower birth rate, increase in median age, and departure of 18 to 24 year old homes from Hamden as contributing to the decline. Area schools will have to respond to these trends. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. Many teams are preparing for upcoming conference play for spring sports. Let's go to Matt Mabry for more. Hello Waveland, I'm Matt Mabry back at again with your Wave Sports update. Our CCSJ men's and women's bowling teams will be competing in the USBC Intercollegiate Nationals competition in Las Vegas, Nevada, April 19th. The dance team recently competed in the DTU Virtual Championships where they placed second in college jazz, college palm, and team performance. And will be looking to win the DTU National Championships in Orlando, Florida. The team send-off will be at the RIT Monday, April 3rd. Competition days are April 6th through the 8th. Good luck to the team and to Wave TV social media correspondent and dance team captain Shannon Sistrunk. Track and field will begin their outdoor season Saturday, April 1st at Olivet Nazarene. This outdoor season, we can see multiple athletes move up into the Calumet College all-time track and field records. Baseball currently has nine wins and 17 losses. March 24th and 25th, the team will play against conference rivals, the University of St. Francis Fighting Saints. And the softball team currently has a record of six wins and 16 losses. The team will be competing in a doubleheader Friday, March 24th, against conference rivals Judson University. 
Good luck to Wave TV co-anchor Roxanne Inez. Men's volleyball currently has a record of six wins and seven losses. Thursday, March 24th, the team will finish out their regular season at home against the Roosevelt Lakers. The CCA Conference Tournament will begin March 28th. We are looking forward to an exciting next couple of weeks filled with lots and lots of action for our teams. Good luck to everyone. I'm Matt Mabry, and that was your Wave Sports Update. Back to you, Roxanne and Aaron. Thank you so much, Matt. In Whiting, construction of the new White Castle restaurant on Indianapolis Boulevard is near completion. The historic White Castle building that has anchored the intersection with Cleveland Avenue since 1935 is expected to close on or around March 31st. This will come as some road closures. Cleveland Avenue will be closed for up to two weeks beginning April 3rd, so crews can connect utilities to the new restaurant. Nearby houses on Cleveland Avenue will also be affected throughout the alley between Atchison and Cleveland. Residents are asked to be aware of emergency vehicles that may have to travel the wrong way due to street closure. The company plans to demolish the historic White Castle building and donate the items from it to the Whiting Robertsdale Historical Society. They have not reported when the 88-year-old building will be demolished. We are going to take a short break. Next up is Murillo Lopez with a story about his experience with the Blue Man Group. Welcome back to Wave TV. Earlier last month, Wave TV got an exclusive invite to talk one-on-one -on -one with the cast and crew of the Blue Man Group. With more on the story, here's Marilio Lopez. Wave TV recently attended a Blue Man Group show at the Briar Street Theater, where we got a chance to experience the magic behind the Blue Man. Here's a recap. Blue Man Group hosted a college press night. Calumet College of St. Joseph was invited to be part of the experience. Shavings editor Skylar Pittman and I participated in the college press night for this amazing show. The Blue Man Group first appeared in Chicago around 25 years ago. It's no surprise it's had such a long and successful run. The show features innovative music, art, and comedic stories along with the use of custom musical instruments. The three Blue Men are constantly improvising, inviting audience members on stage, adding thrill and excitement to their experience. I would know since I was one of the lucky ones to be picked. A blue man sprung into the crowd, extended his arm, and put me on stage with another audience member. I became part of the show. A lot goes into the production of the show as well as the cleanup after the final curtain call. Stagehands rush to clear the messy theater, preparing it for the next performance. Briar Street Theater offers student discounts, so if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend it. But if you're shy, sit in the back. Hope that you guys get to experience the show for yourselves. Now back to you guys in the studio. 